Over 300,000 years ago, mysterious early Neanderthals, sporting bearskin clothing and the latest high-tech weaponry, conquered northern Europe in style. Indeed, the use of bearskin was likely the key adaptation of early humans to the climate in the north. It was an ancient blitzkrieg, and these early humans left their mark on the archaeological record. Neanderthals, Homo neanderthalensis, were a human species that lived across Eurasia starting over 400,000 years ago, long before us, Homo sapiens, until they went extinct around 40,000 years ago. But their legacy lives on. Neanderthal genes can be found in every modern human population due to interbreeding. Like the largest ape alive today, the gorilla, archaic humans are thought to have evolved from plant-eating ancestors. By the time of the diminutive Australopithecines, who lived three to four million years ago and consumed everything that moved or didn't move, being an omnivore seems to have become fashionable. It appears that scavenging from dead animals that other predators had killed was a common practice for them. The early vegetarian hominins, however, became extinct, while the meat-eaters persisted up until the present. Tellingly, the desire for meat had become fully ingrained by the time of the Neanderthal. Indeed, it is exceedingly obvious, that the ancestor hominin to Neanderthals and modern humans had evolved into an omnivore with a hunger for meat, after a few million years. Neanderthals were an especially aggressive and predatory human species. In actual fact, early Neanderthals were not peaceful omnivores, but ferocious, cannibalistic carnivores, super-predators of the Stone Age, according to current archaeological evidence. Apex predators, Neanderthals lived at the top of the food chain, and everything, including other humans was on the menu. According to a new study, bear skin was utilized by the prehistoric humans to survive the harsh winters in northern Europe over 300,000 years ago. The site is correlated with the interglacial optimum of marine isotope stage 9, a climactic warm period in the geological record. It is the final period of the Lower Paleolithic, and lasted roughly from 337,000 to 300,000 years ago. Early Neanderthals lived in Europe at that time, although they had likely left during the previous glacial period. Around 330,000 years ago, ancient human populations started to repopulate Europe, as the climate warmed and the sea level rose. Thousands of hand axes and other artifacts have been discovered at many sites this period. During this time, the summers were similar to or somewhat warmer than they are now, while the winters were a bit chillier. For the production of stone tools, the primitive ancient civilization changed throughout this time. According to a study that was just published in the Journal of Human Evolution, cut marks were detected on the foot and toe bones of a cave bear that had been discovered at the Stone Age Schoening an archaeological site in Lower Saxony in Germany. According to researchers, the latest discoveries represent one of the earliest examples of this kind of evidence from our distant ancestors, who did not yet likely have all the same anatomical characteristics as modern humans. These recently discovered cut marks are evidence that Neanderthal people in northern Europe were able to survive the cold some 300,000 years ago, in part due to warm bare skins. According to prior research, winter coats, particularly those of extinct cave bears, are made up of both long outside hairs that create an airy protective layer, and short, dense hairs that are extremely insulating when the animal is hibernating. Although cut markings on bones are typically understood in archaeology as an evidence of the use of meat, researchers indicate that very little meat has been found in the hand and foot bones. In this instance, we can trace the meticulous skin stripping to the development of such delicate and exact cut marks used to remove the skins. Archaeologists typically assume that the presence of only adult animals at an archaeological site is proof of hunting, and at Schoningen they have determined that all the bare bones and teeth belong to adult bears. According to the experts, the bear skin must be taken soon after the animal dies because otherwise the hair falls out, and the skin becomes useless. The animal couldn't have been dead for very long at that time, because it had been skinned. The placement of the cut marks on the bears also suggests that the animals were used for their skins, according to specialists, who also believe that this was an important early human adaptation to the northern environment.
researchers assert that the extremely fine cut marks on these bear carcasses imply meticulous butchering, and demonstrate butchery patterns that are similar to bears discovered at other Stone Age sites. Animals were therefore employed for more than just food, as their pelts were necessary for staying warm in the frigid winter. Bear skins have excellent insulation qualities, and may have helped Middle Pleistocene hominins adapt to the bitterly cold winters of northwestern Europe. In contrast, the use of raptor claws as jewelry and red body paint by Neanderthals appears to have been limited to a certain area of southern Europe. Did Neanderthals in this region have a unique significance for wearing talon jewelry and body paint? While it is challenging or even impossible to determine what these symbols signify to Neanderthals, their use may suggest that they were engaging in communication. The controversy over whether Neanderthals wore talons is at the core of a wider one among paleoanthropologists. Thirty years ago, experts believed that Homo sapiens exclusively exhibited symbolic behavior, and Neanderthals were completely unrelated to us. Now, there are tidbits of information that paint a different picture. Since the world's oldest known spears were also unearthed at the same site, researchers claim that the ancient Stone Age site is essential to understanding early people and the origins of hunting. The spears demonstrate the use of wood as a raw material for Paleolithic implements, and support the Middle Pleistocene humans' practice of collective hunting. Ten wooden spears from the same period, known as the Shoningen spears, were discovered with the bones of the cave bear. The spear's age was initially believed to be between 380,000 and 400,000 years old, based on their stratigraphic location sandwiched between glacial layers, and located inside a well-known sedimentary succession. The spears were then dated to between 337,000 and 300,000 years old using thermoluminescence, and dating of heated flints in a deposit underneath the stratum containing the spears. As a result, they are now also dated at the climax of the interglacial marine isotope stage 9M epoch. The Wonder app, which transforms words into digital art, was used to create the majority of the images that are displayed in this video. It is now extremely difficult to discern that an AI, rather than a human artist, was responsible for the creation of a work of art. Simply click the link provided in the box below the video to start your free trial. With Wonder, you have the ability to create mesmerizing digital artworks out of words. Entering a prompt and selecting an art style are all that is required before you can watch Wonder bring your idea to life in a matter of seconds. With a premium subscription you get over 20 art styles, unlimited art renderings, faster processing, and no advertisements. Simply input phrases such as, Neanderthal warrior, or, ancient human, choose a painting style and then press the Create button to have Wonder paint it for you. I was able to create dozens of images in the matter of minutes by using different descriptive words, styles and image sizes to get custom art for my videos. In point of fact, you are going to find that their ultra-realistic model functions exceptionally well. To download Wonder and get a free trial of the premium version to put your creative skills to the test, click on the exclusive link that I have provided below the video. Thanks to Wonder for sponsoring this video and introducing me to their app so I could bring my artistic ideas to life. The precise human species that made and used the wooden swords and other artifacts at Schoningen are still unknown, because no human remains have been found in the Schoningen Pleistocene deposits to date. The most plausible contenders are early Neanderthals. The Steinheim skull, which belongs to the same time period and has a contentious classification, was discovered around 300 miles to the south. The Steinheim cranium is likely the most peculiar concoction of hominin traits from the Middle Pleistocene of Europe. The Steinheim cranium appears to be from a gracile female creature between 250,000 and 350,000 years old. Comparatively speaking, it is smaller and has weaker skull features than other European hominid remains. It was evident that the skull was not a monkey, contrary to early speculation, based on the size and shape of the head. The original fossil was occasionally referred to as Homo steinheimensis in older literature. Actually, the large occipital bun that is clearly a Neanderthal characteristic is present, but many other features of the skull, such as the canine fossa and the longer, smaller and flatter face than the Neanderthal face, predate Homo sapiens. Indeed, 
the Steinheim cranium therefore resembles both Neanderthals and Homo heidelbergensis. However, it still exhibits some archaic traits that place it somewhere between Homo erectus and Homo sapiens, such as strong brow ridges and a small brain case. The rather spherical brain case also resembles that of Homo sapiens in form. The cranial capacity of the skull, which is slightly flattened, ranges from 950 to 1280 cubic centimeters. Thus, it is categorized as Homo heidelbergensis by the majority of paleoanthropologists, and it is thought to represent a form of Homo heidelbergensis that evolved into Neanderthals. The skull has been classified as pre-Neanderthal on occasion, yet it has also been excluded from the Neanderthal lineage. In the past, Neanderthals were also known as Homo sapiens neanderthalensis, but Neanderthals and modern humans are now generally considered to be different species by paleoanthropologists, with an as yet unknown species thought to be their last common ancestor. According to a study by anthropologist Chris Stringer, Homo heidelbergensis, Denisovans and the Steinheim skull should all placed entirely on the Neanderthal side of the family tree, rather than being the common ancestor of Neanderthals and humans. In fact, the Steinheim skull is the only sister species of a clade that also includes Homo sapiens and Homo antecessor. They are regarded as the Neanderthals' sister species, rather than an ancestor. What's more, the modern-like face of Homo antecessor, which is strikingly similar to that of modern humans, may have a long lineage in our genus. Indeed, the modern human's face may have evolved and vanished multiple times in the past which is not unlikely given that facial anatomy is heavily influenced by diet and environment. In other words, the modern-looking face is actually very ancient, and it has been passed down to our species. Whereas Neanderthals' faces changed the most during their evolution, meaning their features were derived rather than more ancient. So early Neanderthals may have looked more modern, while later Neanderthals with their thick superorbital ridges looked more primitive. The massive supraorbital region, which is most noticeable in the later Neanderthal cranium, must have given their visage an unusually primitive appearance, according to one early anthropologist. Hunting huge animals may have been necessary for Homo neanderthalensis, especially in colder climates, because they provided food and hides. Large animals including ancient rhinos and hippopotamuses, bears, horses and deer were among those attacked, as evidenced by the preserved bones of these creatures. The skillful hunting and orderly butchering of these animals indicate that these primitive people were working in cooperative groupings. They hunted big game and created a range of implements, and lived and worked in cooperative groups. Large animal hunting was a dangerous activity. Our forefathers were able to hunt from a little safer distance than was possible with older weaponry, because of the use of long spears that were plunged into an animal. The oldest wooden items currently known to exist in the world are these spears. They demonstrate that early man was a skilled hunter and not merely a scavenger. Due to its chilly temperature and short daylight hours, Stone Age Northern Europe required the development of these weapons in order to be settled. What's more, the spears display design and building abilities that were previously solely associated with modern humans. Despite being straightforward weapons, they are extremely advanced for the time and show the understanding of the properties of different types of wood. The Shoningen spears are also significant because it shows that spears were being produced in great numbers. Wooden spears were both thrusting and throwing weapons in prehistoric cultures. Together, the evidence points to the likelihood that the Shoningen spears were used for a variety of purposes, including self defense against dangerous predators like saber toothed cats and cave bears with which humans coexisted in the same environment. In point of fact, the discovery of the spears completely altered our understanding of how early Neanderthals evolved. Homo heidelbergensis and early Neanderthals were previously thought to be primitive, languageless creatures that obtained meals by scavenging other carnivore kills or naturally occurring deaths. The Shoningen humans killed enormous and dangerous game, which shows that their technology and hunting techniques were advanced that they had intricate social systems and that they had mastered some type of language. The spears and accompanying discoveries show sophisticated technological abilities, and provide the first concrete proof that these people hunted their prey. Therefore, 
it is conceivable that the Shonin and humans possessed cognitive abilities including anticipatory planning, thinking, and acting, which were previously only attributed to contemporary humans. These different findings highlight the lack of agreement over how to interpret the archaeological evidence at early Neanderthal sites. On one side, people's opinions range from Neanderthals had nothing intriguing going on in their heads, to Neanderthals are totally modern and basically like us, and we can't discriminate against them. Thus, early Neanderthals were not exactly like modern humans, but perhaps they were more like us than previously thought. Either way, a Neanderthal dressed in bearskin clothing, carrying a spear and sporting an eagle talon necklace and red body paint would have been one badass dude for sure. Thanks again to Wonder for sponsoring this video, and remember to click the link in the description box below for a free trial.